So today what I'd like to talk about is uh, the VR development that uh, we have done in the US uh, studio that uh, uh, we've been doing for the past five years. Uh, did a lot of research and uh, uh, tried to put that the application to, to the uh, use of the industry like uh, construction and uh, architectural industry. So we're also going to talk about the uh, uh, the AEC, how we actually use the uh, uh, VR, and how the method of VR presentations. We're also going to talk about the uh, importance of the VR software because that's actually we draw, uh, we actually drive the uh, the hardware itself. And we're going to introduce our special ways to do the uh, VR design review. So quickly have you uh, get the VR to um, benefit your design. Um, also. We're going to show you how we use a VR for construction purposes. Uh, there's quite a few companies in the world that's using our VR solution for that. And next, we're going to talk about the future development of that. So uh, why VR? So why we do VR? Because to represent a spatial, uh, spatial sense is very difficult. Uh, usually, uh, in the old days, we use uh, you know, image, render image, scale model. Um, but the problem with that is that you can never get the presence, like I'm there kind of presence. Um, we also can use the videos. We can also use uh, you know, all kind of description, whatnot, but you can never achieve the presence that you can experience the actual you know, experience. So here comes the VR. Right? What the VR does is that puts you in the situation that you really can experience the, the environment, the, sens the sensation that you've been there, and it's very effective to show off, like, you know, uh, you, you are no longer the third person, but you are the first person inside the environment, inside the world, that you can really see the, uh, the uh, impact. So really, it's, uh, it's good for a lot of purposes, you know, you, the real advantage is that it gives you the immersiveness to the, uh, to, to the feel of the image itself. Um, so as you know, I actually from uh, the, uh, the US game, gaming industry, you know, I done a lot of uh, computer games. Uh, this uh, this uh, VR uh, can use for a lot of computer games and uh, entertainment. Uh, we also know that this can be applied to the uh, medical trainings. Uh, they can use the, to, to use this for the uh, Acquire new skill uh, to do, uh, you know, uh, heart re re resuscitation. Uh, lots of those uh, uh, benefits uh, when you start to perform the procedure yourself. Uh, also, we understand the VR uh, is also used for the manufacturing um, industry, so they can use that to uh, uh, produce uh, quickly produce a prototyping and to get to the situations like what if and how does it look in the real life size, right? Uh, you can walk through it, you can even drive the car, uh, what, what not. So uh, this is actually very good for uh, QA, uh, evaluation, and also the design review. So I understand that the, the uh, manufacturing uh, industry, they use mostly use SolidWorks and Rhino. So basically they use that and then pump it to a VR software, which we're gonna talk about today. Uh, and see the, uh, the uh, reviews and how do they actually can make better, um, you know, compared to uh, the traditional methods. So also I work with the McCarthy uh, in, the, in the Irvine actually. They have a lot of uh, office in, in US and basically they build a lot of hospital in the uh, in US and they, in the early days, they actually uh, build use this uh, VR technology, build the uh, hospital, and trying to win the bids. And what, what their selling point is that the uh, doctors and nurses now can wear VR, and they can experience the uh, space they design. Um, so uh, they can actually provide a quicker reviews. So here is uh, a bunch of reasons why they choose that. I'm actually working with the, uh, Jordan there that uh, he is currently actually bit another, another um, jobs in, uh, in San Diego. So as you can see, um, you can use that to, before the build, you can, you can walk through, practically walk through the uh, room size 
and you can see the uh, in the uh, uh, operation uh, room, um, well, the OR, people can see if their equipment can be blocking, could be having problems, uh, or if the arm can reach out, even the gurney can be moved in and out, uh, lots of very, very good advantages. Uh, you know, really save time because uh, you don't have to go back and forth, not understanding the, uh, you know, the problem of uh, uh, going back and forth reading the blueprints. So you don't need, need to understand the blueprints at all. You just wear it, just pretend that it's been already built so you can actually get the things going. So in that case, uh, McCarthy can win the bid very, very quickly and very effectively. So uh, people are liking them, their services, and that's why. So, so today I'm not going to talk about the games, so I like to focus in just the AEC, uh, standing for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction uh, Application. So we can talk about the, uh, the early VR cave environment, uh, what that is. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the new uh, mobile VR headset, which is, uh, you know, I personally bought one just uh, for the heck of it. It's actually pretty cool, but not very useful. Uh, we also would talk about the uh, head-mounted display H HMD, which is the Oculus Rift, as well as the uh, HTC Vive. Um, and we're going to what we do the most is the VR software development. We work closely with those uh, uh, hardware manufacturers. And we also talk about what's unique uh, of our solution that, uh, that can uh, speed up the, uh, uh, the application. Uh, and also we're going to talk about the uh, construction applications. So the uh, CAVE uh, environment is being developed by, uh, by one of the people uh, in uh, Illinois. Uh, it's actually from uh, Chicago there. It's uh, 1992. They really, really simple. They make you wear a glass. The glass has a wireless uh, sensor. So it's sensing where you are. And there's, you face three sets of walls. And from there, you have st uh, st uh, stereoscopic uh, view. So it looks like 3D you are totally immersed in that. Uh, the setup is really clunky. You know, it takes, I, I think it's probably a day because you have to literally put up the walls and you have to put up the very, uh, you know, few, like three different projectors. Those projectors are very expensive. Uh, they use a, uh, a huge uh, reflective, uh, uh, I call it the uh, reflector there to, uh, to really seamlessly seam that together. So it's very expensive. So uh, the pros is that, of course, um, you know, if you actually wear that, you can have multiple participants wear the glass, you can see each other, so you don't go blind. Uh, and also it's a full-scale full uh, uh, room, so that, it, uh, so, so that you can see, uh, you can actually walk to every corner of the rooms to, to check it out. Uh, the cons, very, very expensive. Uh, what I know is the upper quarter million dollars, US dollar to uh, set it up. Uh, you, you can really not use, uh, bring this outside to demonstrate to your uh, clients due to its, uh, you know, the, the setup uh, time and cost. So the next is the, uh, uh, those uh, uh, phone-based VR uh, headsets. So as you can see, um, the first solutions they have is a Samsung gear. Uh, they, uh, they use that. It's very proprietary. Uh, if you don't have their phone, it won't work. But uh, it's very nice. You actually are building a, uh, a, uh, a controller right on the on the headset itself. Uh, the other side is, is the Google Car Cardboard, which is uh, very easy to use. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, it's not proprietary. So uh, that's the a lot of Chinese uh, they make those uh, headsets. So, uh, like I said, the uh, pros is very it's relatively affordable um, and also very portable. And it's lightweight, very easy to carry. Um, the cons is that uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's all from the phone, so you can see the CPU power is all from the phone, the GB power is all driven by the phone, so really it cannot be scaled that much. And also it doesn't, uh, since you wear the phone to your head, you cannot really control it un unless you hook up to a external controller. And of course, there's not much head tracking, so use a accelerometer uh, to track your head, so not much you can do there. So really, you cannot perform a room size uh, uh, scale VR. So here we are. This is the one that I, I personally like, and uh, we use uh, HTC Vive. Uh, it's uh, actually quite interesting. 
they have wireless, uh, you can see here, it's demonstrated here, it's a two lighthouse here, it's an uh, uh, infrared uh, sensor, and pretty much there's nothing com uh, connected to the, uh, to the uh, computer, uh, it's only just compute, uh, to connect to the uh, power itself. And you have two controllers that you can use to control, and it's pretty nice there. Um, and it's, it really, you can walk from point to point. Uh, the other one is the Oculus Rift. Um, the, uh, the nice thing about that is that uh, they really know the hardware. Uh, so they did something called time warp. So when the frame rate is not enough, uh, instead of it's, uh, it's choking the frame rate, which is jitter, cause the image to jit jitter, uh, they simply just have a, a black kind of kind of little band around you, so you don't feel that much dizzy. Because this, if uh, if uh, the frame rate is not right, it usually causes you to have a headache. It's called a VR sickness. Uh, so this is the uh, for the uh, HDMI setup. Very simple. You got a laptop. All it takes a laptop and a headset and uh, a tracker, a uh, motion tracker, and there you go. Uh, it's that simple. So the pros there is, uh, you know, is because it's using a PC base. So if you have a really powerful, um, you know, PC, it can, it can scale almost infinitely. You know, these days uh, you have a better graphics card. You can actually do SLI. You can put three, two or three uh, graphics card there to have this interleave performance. Um, also, because you're using the uh, uh, the infrared sensor, uh, it will really track your uh, your movement very precisely. And also, I mentioned that uh, you know it used the uh, controllers, so it's uh, very very uh, easy to control the uh, the feature that you can build in. Uh, the only con uh, the only con complaint I have is uh, it's not wireless. The uh, the head mounted display uh, you you have to uh, wear a long wire, so which is uh, can be a very hazard, you know. And I'm hoping you know from this industry people can come up with a wireless solution. Uh, that would really make a lot of people happy, including gamers and, and the people who use those uh, for architecture and, uh, and the construction people. You know, otherwise, right now, even today, when we demonstrate to you, the wire is a big issue. We have to make sure we don't trip, trip that over. So uh, let's talk about the software uh, really quickly, because uh, the software is what we use to drive it. Uh, there's a two, uh, three different software type. Uh, which the first one is uh, just use the uh, panoramic. Uh, basically, we're gonna show you that it's actually mostly used for the uh, photo um, uh, kind of application so you can see a stereoscopic uh, picture that surrounds you. The other one is uh, very popular these days is uh, the game engine. They pretty much generic. Uh, you have to do a, a programming. You also need to do uh, you know the uh, what I call the uh, conversions. Uh, we're gonna go through that detail uh, in a bit. So uh, popular game engine like Unreal, uh, Unity 3D, Stingray, Crytek engine. You probably guys have heard all this. The last one is uh, uh, today our focus is. Uh, I call it turnkey VR solutions. Uh, it does the interactive uh, simulation. Uh, so basically it's very, very popular right now uh, for the architectural and uh, construction company. Uh, they can just uh, you know, plug it in and boom, uh, it, will, it works right in the box. So uh, uh, we as a fuser there, we have one of those uh, uh, features that is uh, pretty unique. Uh, currently it's uh, patent pending. Uh, the other competitors, not re exactly our competitors, you know, they, they like Iris VR and, and Enscape, but they don't have the, any feature that allows you to interact with the environment. So panoramic uh, 360 VR, as I mentioned, it's just basically a series of photos and uh, videos that are uh, taken and they stitch that together for the 360 so you can look around. But here's the problem. A lot of clients says, can you move? Can you actually move forward? Of course you cannot, because it's a static uh, pictures. It's just an image. You, it's not allow you to, uh, to, to interact in the environment. Next is the uh, generic engine. Uh, I mentioned about Unreal, Unity, and all that. Uh, a lot of people, gamer, likes that because it looks very nice. However, uh, it's uh, really a problem because if we do the, uh, I call the industry application, you don't have time to actually do the uh, conversion process, which is uh, really complicated. You have to hire professional artists and also programmers to program the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the engine itself because it doesn't know what you want to do. 
So as I mentioned here, the uh, conversion process that if anybody have done these 3Ds knows that uh, the polygon limit is a big time, a uh, big problem for the uh, VR. Because VR right now, if you don't have 90 hertz, it will cause you to have a mo motion sickness. And that's very bad, you know. And usually if, uh, say, a building design can cause 30 million polygon at once, you know, a typical game engine can handle around, around a million and that's kind of stop. So you have to go, can you imagine, going from uh, 30 million um, polygons to go, that, go down to around, you know, less than a million. That's a lot of work. Not only do you have to do that, you have to reassign the textures and uh, shaders. You do the light baking, you do a programming, you know, should I mention, just, just a lot of work. And uh, also because of this, uh, if you do really like uh, any design for the buildings and, you know, any like manufacturing, the problem with that is that your design is out of sync because you already do the conversion. When they make the design change, it's out of sync. And definitely that's not uh, suitable for the uh, rapid design or, you know, uh, visualization, you know, in the way because of turning, uh, the turning time, turn around time. So here's our solution here is uh, we want to make it as, as seamless as possible. So we would do auto conversion. So there's no, you know, there's no need. Just press a button. Uh, it goes from your, you know, uh, if you guys use uh, SolidWorks, they would go SolidWorks right to what you want to see. Uh, there's no steps involved. There's no optimization. Uh, the best thing is that we actually uh, did this so-called so the uh, life life link technology that uh, we uh, I invented about five years ago. Um, still in the patent process, it take a long time for, for going through that. Um, so that allows you to modify the, your change in the real time. If you don't like your change, you simply can make it and then you will go back to your authoring tools. And since it's very, there's no uh, complex thing to learn, so it can easily be done by the internal staff, uh, you know, as opposed to the other previous solution that you have to hire external contractor to do it. So here's the diagram to show you. Uh, here I've used the uh, rivet to show you that, uh, you know, just within a second that you can actually go into the actual building itself. You are just literally walking inside and experience the design. So the uh, advantage of that is uh, we can help the people uh, a lot better to quickly visualize this, the, the projects. And also uh, because of using those HMDs, it's very easy for people to, uh, to experience the full scale. It's very, very cool, very easy. Um, also, you can validate your design decisions. So every time you make a decision because you're there, so you're very confident you make the right decision rather than looking at the blueprints, which you have no idea what it does. Um, so also, uh, we're building the, uh, the, uh, the, the tools that allow you to have multiple options. Think about it, you know, if you do a design, um, Choice is one is no choice. You know, usually you present one <laughs> one design, but what I like to do is that uh, the uh, the tools present you as many design choice you want to make it to your client. So um, this does not come free because you still have to really get a very good engine. Uh, so you know, my background is uh, uh, you know engine design, uh, simulation, uh, simulation engine design. So this one here, we need to maintain 90 hertz at all times. If not, it will go to the next one, which is 45 hertz. That one does not hurt that much, but still, you know, you will experience not as smooth. So also, we need to make sure the uh, these uh, headsets, because the technology is, uh, is I think, the uh, first generation, uh, the uh, infrared is not exactly that great. So it's not good for indoor, I mean outdoor, sorry. Indoor is better, <laughs> you know. Uh, there's, uh, we, we've seen it, if you, if you also have the floor is reflective, it's not very good, you know. Uh, I got a lot of problems. Also the, uh, the, the headsets, the uh, resolution is pretty low. Uh, right now, if they, uh, both um, H, uh, HTC Vibe and also Oculus, they claim it's 2K screen. But it's not. It's actually one one k per each eyes. So when you pl you know one plus one is two, so it's two k. But really, is uh, um, as anybody knows, is uh, uh, they are not as high res. This will cause a uh, the aliasing issue. You can see the uh, you know a little you know uh, triangulation on those edges. You know, it looks pretty nasty. Um, I mentioned the headset uh, with the wire. 
really sucks. So hopefully one day uh, people will come up with better wireless swings. So that way um, we can have uh, where the the heads are, you know, uh, not limit to the uh, to the to the wire how long the wire can you know can go. So here's some pictures to show you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna quickly go into the uh, live demo. So we're gonna just show you some pictures here. So this one. Uh, I got a few people here that uh, uh, they were actually right inside the uh, VR environment. They would point out what's wrong, like the pipes that penetrate things. Uh, they can actually see the, uh, how the construction that is being made. We also have a very special mode is that uh, when you're in the, uh, in the uh, uh, VR, sometimes uh, you cannot really move things. Like for example, the uh, uh, metal doctor, when they want to move things, they don't really want to pick up the headset to move it. They just want to give a command to say, move this equipment by five inches. So we have a mode called operator mode. The operator mode allows you to, you know, where uh, the one where the headset, the other one can do the modification when it's actually needed. Uh, also, uh, we want to make sure that people in the uh, uh, in the uh, VR headset can do the uh, can do the uh, uh, navigation. So you can actually uh, walk around it. You know, you can see that. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about the uh, VR. Why why construction people like VR usage so much? Well, one of the things that is uh, they want to solve the uh, logistic problem, planning problems, and. Uh, Every time when they do things uh, wrong or whatever, it causes delay. Delay means money. They can get sued. Um, you know, it's really, really bad. You know, uh, it's a contractual business. Uh, they also want to make sure there's a lot of design conflicts they want to resolve. So it's a lot better to do preventive work than a, you know, fixing work. Um, also, uh, a lot of times that uh, people uh, working there, they use 2D maps. They don't have a sense of 3D kind of kind of kind of it's a problem by nature. So uh, all these reasons, uh, I have uh, quite a few uh, uh, you know construction uh, clients that uh, doing business with us. So uh, again, this mentioned a lot of like you know uh, saving time and mention, and also we have uh, they want to collaborate with different uh, discipline. Uh, in the uh, construction field, we have like engineers. You know, they do uh, they do uh, uh, plumbing, they do uh, electric, uh, all kind of things. They have to do together. Uh, they have to collaborate. So with a uh, VR device, uh, it's a lot easier to resolve the conflict. Uh, if anything that uh, they since they work separate, when they put the work together, it needs to be all correct. So also VR is an added uh, value added service. So a lot of uh, uh, construction company wants that because their competitor doesn't have the solution. So when they provide that solution, they like it. Um, so I, we already in the in US we see a DPR is using it, uh, McCarthy. You know, there's a list of people they they kind of kind of call us and then we are actually working back to to them. All they are competing for that value and the service. So uh, VR for construction. So. The first thing you, you notice is that uh, we can create a complete sequence for how the building's been built from, from day one all the way to day whatever. Maybe it takes three years, it would take three years. But in our, our software, you can see you are immersed into that environment. You can watch how it's been built every day if you want to. Uh, but this can be simply applied to SolidWorks. You, if you something you know, uh, an object, you know, say a mouse, you won't want to take it, take it apart, you want to put together, uh, that can be also illustrated in the same method. So, what is important here is that we can visualize the construction sequence and also, you know, help the uh, construction manager to see and test out any problems that before it become a real problem. So they can simulate uh, the problem before it becomes a real problems. And really give a planner a, a better sense of how do you plan out the entire project. So, you know, uh, to avoid any mistakes. Um, I mentioned about 4D construction sequence. Uh, they actually currently they just see it in the two. Uh, they pretty much see it in the uh, uh, projected way. It means that just uh, a video or so, some sort. Imagine if you can actually go inside the construction site to see how it's been built. You can avoid a lot of troubles. 
right? It's uh, really uh, also very good for training for the uh, construction workers. And I want to mention about safety planning, because safety, I understand uh, people get killed uh, in the construction site, which is a big problem these days. So I kind of <clears throat> borrow a video from, uh, from a, uh, uh, I think it's uh, from a gammon uh, construction, which we, you know, uh, this will show you how bad the, uh, the uh, accident can be. So there you go. So you can see there's unforeseen things that can knock you out. It can even kill you. Not sure why it's not playing smoothly. <laughs> Um, sorry, <laughs> did not expect that. But you can see uh, people can get knocked out by their own equipment and they can fall because some of those things does not place the uh, correct uh, safety equipment there. Uh, it's kind of like the movie that you can die like many ways in the <laughs> construction field. All right, I just take that out of mystery because it's really slow. Okay, so you can see from the video just a little bit that uh, it's a very dangerous field here. So uh, the idea that we have is that what if you use the VR for the safety training? You know, what if you can prevent those uh, problems before it actually happen, before actually somebody gets hurt? Um, so we basically, you know, uh, use the way that we can see uh, a way to, you know, technology to simulate if there is any possible ways to hit people. Because uh, the engine is, is a full-time uh, collision model detection, so you can pretty much see when objects hit each, each other. And uh, basically helping people, you know, to practice that and also uh, really uh, help them to avoid those accidents in the future when the, uh, the work con con uh, commenced. So um, we're just gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some pictures before I go to the real diamond. So in our, uh, here you can see in the interface, it will have a little interface tells you uh, if you watch the building building and if you see anything wrong, uh, you can actually pick up the, uh, uh, the controller. You can place the, uh, those uh, uh, safety equipment around it. So prevent it, you, uh, later on you can be both going back to the blueprint. So, you know, uh, it's actually save a lot of time. Uh, on that, and uh, we can use uh, you know um, all kind of like things like uh, a hazard marker, so it warns people if that's a potential danger. And uh, of course, uh, last but not least, uh, helping those uh, people to solve the pipes, which I keep pointing out. Those uh, when you put the MVP pipe together, it can collide with the architecture or sometimes structural. You know, architectural, they can actually yield to that, but structural, you cannot really talk too much about that. They, they're pretty firm about that. All right, so let's, uh, let's do it. So, so my staff here were um, to attempt to uh, show you guys how you look on the screen. Okay, so uh, we have one colleague there. She is gonna to set the uh, those uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, lighthouse. You can see the lighthouse. Uh, uh, the uh, infrared sensor need to be in range, and you can see it's flashing. And one of those is still not sensing. But once those two are, are active, okay, so it's ready. The headset. Okay. Okay. Good. So what they're gonna do is uh, perform a room room skill setup. Maybe you can you can kill it. Let's kill it. You already said the room skill. Room skill Oh, okay. Uh, they just informed me that uh, they already performed the calibration. Usually you have to calibrate uh, with the uh, software, so it allows you to, uh, uh, to sense the, uh, the space. So they skipped that. Uh, well, um, 
when you actually purchase the HTC Vibe, they will actually ask you to set up your room to the actual size so you can actually walk around. So you can see she just put on the uh, headset. So pretty much um, they're gonna show you how the design, um, how to do a design review. So this is actually straight from a, a river model. So by pressing one button, now now she is actually in the uh, inside the uh, the house, uh, and she can look around. She can walk around. Go ahead, walk around. Uh, be careful. This is what I'm talking about. The uh, the wire is really a big problem right now, so it needs to be wireless. But you can see SG Walk is actually a real scale uh, to, the, uh, to the, the room itself. Okay, uh, well, uh, what, let's see what it look like in the uh, nighttime. So we can see there is a little indicator. So you can use that to change the day and night. There you go. Okay, can we take a look at the inside the house? When, when the, can you go inside the house for, for us? So using a little indicator, boom, now she is in the uh, kitchen here. So she can teleport anywhere she like. And if anything, those uh, uh, things she doesn't like, if she doesn't cannot adjust it, she can ask uh, her colleague, which is so we can perform a operator mode. So she can, she can make some complaint and then uh, Grace here, uh, the, uh, my colleague here, will adjust that for her. So, so Connie, what, what do you like to adjust? Okay, she wanted the chair to be moved. So Grace will simply click on the uh, chair itself and uh, she was able to move it. And you can see, uh, it's actually live. She can actually see the chairs being moved. And how about change the lighting? How about the, uh, this light is really, I would say, a little too bright. Can you, can you make, it, make it kind of soft? Yeah, more, more, more uh, dimmer, because it's really bright. So you can see by simply changing that, you can actually, we are measured by the Lux, by the actual IES standard to make the, uh, uh, the lights to comply to that. Okay, uh, so uh, remember I mentioned about design options, so we can actually uh, show you how the design option works. Oh, she just changed the floor to uh, different materials in the real time. So you can see if you actually want to buy a house or try to do a remodeling, you can actually check out this before you actually commit your, your purchase. Okay, uh, let's move on to the, uh, the, the uh, uh, construction, okay? Okay, we're gonna quickly show you guys uh, how the construction people are gonna use it. We're gonna load it up, uh, a sample project that takes from a uh, construction sequence from, uh, from day one to all the way to the uh, com complete finished uh, buildings. So this is the building that's already finished, but we're gonna, we're gonna go to a stage that is in the beginning. You can see there's a schedule, shows you from you know, day one how it's gonna look like to all the way to be finished. Dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. Okay, so she's gonna just sliding that down. As you can see, uh, Connie is seeing everything's being diminished. That's all gone. Now, she can actually commence to the build to start. Connie, would you, would you like to uh, start the uh, 4D sequence? There we go. So you can increase the speed because otherwise it will be too slow. There we go. 
So literally, you can see the background, things have stopped building already. Uh, it's a very fast right now. <laughs> we fast by a factor of like 100. But she can stop. Can you stop? Stop right here. Oops, um, pause. Yeah, okay. Just, just for my sake is uh, stop in the middle, whatever you like, and then we can demonstrate to people how, what do I mean by placing uh, safety equipment around so you can see how we stop the uh, accident. How about here? There we go. Now it stopped in this uh, uh, stage that is exactly the, that day. She feel like there's a problem. So you can see there's a lot of heavy equipment. Can you go, go near the heavy equipment? You literally can put yourself into the uh, those equipment and see what's going on. Go near it. There you go. Okay, so that's pretty dangerous. So can you put some uh, fence? So you can see she is actual real time. She can start to put those things uh, right there. Yeah, just, just hit a few. Trigger. There you go. So she is practiced to put those in. So okay, I think that's good enough. Just yeah, one more. Yeah, you can put anything, any safety uh, equipment there. You know, including the block, uh, concrete, or whatever uh, must like uh, uh, hazard uh, display. Anything on this? Okay, so the last one, why don't we finish, let it, let it finish building? Can you go back to, yeah, just have it finish building? Play all the way, play. Okay. No, she didn't play, she... Play. Okay, there we go. So... Do we have a place to show the uh, clash? Okay. So we're going to uh, show you how fast this building can be built in about a few seconds. And we're going to see if there's any potential problem we can actually fix in that, this simulation. So you can see the pipes and ducts coming in, the walls, architectural walls coming in. So pretty much almost done. So the, the floor comes in, the pipes again comes in. Is it done? Okay, go to the place that uh, if you guys know the problem. Ah, no? Go to that place. Okay, we need to find the place that exactly had the, had the issue. Okay, got it. See the problem? Okay, so she identified a problem, and you gotta you you trying to fix it. So here, uh, she had the power to pretty much move the pipes. If the pipes actually collide, you can see there is a pipe that actually collided. So we can use the uh, tools quickly fix it. Okay, all right. Thank you, ladies. Just uh, have a little more. Just like one more slide. Couple more actually. Okay, that's it. All right, uh, just uh, I know I'm kind of running low on time, but I quickly gonna tell you guys uh, what are the uh, VR future and beyond. So, first one I wanna tell you guys is that. Uh, VR does not stop with a single person experience. You can actually collaborate with people, multiple people in the virtual environment. Uh, so that way you can exchange information, you can actually share uh, different sort of uh, uh, solutions. And also we're gonna talk about the uh, uh, augmented reality and mixed reality. And because I've attended this, I, have to, I cannot stop myself to talk about electronics a little bit. So um, VR collaboration basically allows you to have more than one people that all exist in the environment that all, you guys all wear the uh, headsets. So pretty much this is the video. I'm going to fast forward because I don't have time. Uh, 
So we can see the guy is inside that, and then he can actually invite uh, his, got a colleague inside there, and they can actually interact with each other. However, I'm not sure what's going on with the video player, so it kind of sucks. But you can see that both the people in the virtual environment, when they see the problem, they can share that each other have problems. So. Okay, uh, augmented reality. So uh, we also right now develop a, a uh, the apparatus is called the uh, uh, HoloLens from Microsoft. And this one will give you a sensation, uh, hol holographic uh, effect. So anywhere, instead of wearing a headset, you wear a glass. Uh, so computer, the ent entire computer is being miniaturized onto a glass, a pair of glass. And now you can actually do design in any way you like. It's like a holographic, just like the uh, movie. Um, so the mixed reality, it takes one step ahead, uh, allows you to interact with those uh, uh, superimposed uh, building. You can see this from these pictures that using our software that superimposed to the actual building site. Now you can actually see uh, how it's been built, even though it's not there. So it's not in the virtual env environment, but rather in the mixed uh, environment itself. So anyway, I think this is the last uh, last thing. So uh, what I what I like to see is you know uh, we have better controllers coming out. You know we also you know have uh, uh, audio system integrated to that, and we want to have uh, potentially for better headsets. You know like wireless headsets. You know hopefully this uh, will spark the uh, interest to develop more more sophisticated. Uh, you know. Um, headsets and VR headsets. And anyway, I'm behind. So my whole thing is that VR really is a better, uh, give a better ch ch uh, chance of pre presenting and solving problem or designing review. Uh, it, it made a lot of problems. You know, it has, uh, you can have more engagement with your uh, colleagues and clients. Uh, the, uh, the pretty much the uh, advantage is, uh, is speak for itself. You know, once you experience it, it's uh, really hard to not to use it as uh, one of the uh, methods. So that will conclude my uh, my presentation.